absolute value equations. Okay, so first we're going to start by defining what an absolute value is. Absolute value means the distance from zero. So if I take the absolute value of four, on a number line, four is four spots away from zero, so absolute value of four is four. Likewise, the distance from negative four to zero on a number line is also four. So anytime you're taking the absolute value of a number, you're just going to take it out and make it positive. If it was positive, it'll stay positive. If it was negative, you're going to make it positive. So now down here, we want to know what x equals when we have the absolute value of x equaling 4. Well, what number could I put into the absolute value to make this a true statement? If I were to plug 2 in, would that make a true statement? Is the absolute value of 2 4? Well, no it's not, so it's not 2. The only numbers that will work in here are going to be 4 and negative 4 because the absolute value of 4 is 4, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Okay, so here's the steps to solving an absolute value equation. First of all, we need to get the absolute value alone on one side of the equal sign. Next, we need to set up two equations and drop the absolute value bars and solve each of them. You will always get two answers for absolute value problems. There's one case where you won't and you'll go over that in your teacher talk. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with absolute value of x equals 15. First thing we need to do is make sure our absolute value bar is alone on the left side, which it is. So we don't have anything outside of it or inside of it other than absolute value of x. Okay, so we're going to split this up into two problems. So here's my original problem. I always draw this little upside down V to tell me to break it up into two problems. So I'm going to drop the absolute value bar. I'm going to set it equal to the positive and the negative of this number right here, of 15. Set it equal to the positive and the negative every time. And then I'm going to solve. Right now I'm done. I have x equals 15 and x equals negative 15, so I don't have to go any further. But if there were more to be solved here, I would continue on with more steps. Okay, here's our next one. We have a little bit more going on. We have a minus 3 in with our x. So we want to make sure our absolute value is alone already. It is. We don't have anything else out here. So we're going to break it up into two problems. Our first problem, we're going to take what's inside the absolute value. We're going to set it equal to 8. Our next one, we're going to take what's in the absolute value, and we're going to set it equal to negative 8. So we always set it equal to the positive and the negative of that number. Now we need to solve each of them. So if I start with this left one, I'm going to add 3 on both sides. This is just like from concept 4. And I get x equals 11. On the right, I'm going to add 3 on both sides. And I get x equals negative 5. So notice here, I have x equals negative 5 and x equals 11. My previous answers were 15 and negative 15. Don't get in the misconception that they're always a number and its opposite. It's not always 4 and negative 4. Sometimes it will be 11 and negative 5. So two numbers that don't seem to relate very well. Okay, in our next problem here, we have 2x minus 7 in the absolute value bars, and then equals 3. So, I still have the absolute value bars alone. What it would look like if I didn't have them alone was maybe there'd be a 5 out front, or a plus 1 at the end. That's what we mean whenever we say we want the absolute value bar alone. So, we're ready to split it up into two problems. My first problem, I'm going to have 2x minus 7 equals 3. And my next problem will be 2x minus 7 equals negative 3. So the positive and the negative of that number. Okay, to solve the one on the left, I'm going to start by adding 7 over. And then dividing by 2. So I have x equals 5. Now don't be fooled. Don't just assume the next one is going to be a negative 5. Over here, I'm going to add 7 over, and then divide by 2, 
and I get 2. If you ever want to check your answers, all you need to do is plug it back in for x and see if it makes a true statement. So let's see, let's check our answer, our, our 2 answer. If I were to plug 2 in here, so 2 times 2 minus 7, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 7 is negative 3, so if I had negative 3 in the absolute value, does that equal 3? Yes, it does, so we know that we have the right answer. You would also get a true statement if you plugged 5 back in. Okay, so now we are going to have some independent practice. Go ahead and pause your video, try these two on your own, and then restart it to see me do them. Alright, our absolute values alone, we're going to split it up. We have 3x equals 39, and 3x equals negative 39. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3 in this one as well. We're going to get x equals 13 and negative 13. For the next one, we're ready to split it up because our absolute value is alone. 6x minus 8 equals 38. 6x minus 8 equals negative 38. Add the 8 over. And then we're going to divide both sides by 6. I'm running out of room here. Let's see. X equals 23 over 3 once you simplify that. Both of those are divisible by 2. And then this other one I'm going to have to finish solving up here. So I'm going to add 8 on both sides. Alright, so this one's an example where we kind of get an ugly number, 23 over 3. That happens sometimes with absolute values, but that's fine. Just simplify it if possible and leave it how it is. Okay, our next type of problem, we won't have the absolute value alone. We're going to have to make the absolute value um, get alone. So the first thing we notice is this minus 5 right here. It's outside of our absolute value. We need to move it to the other side of the equal sign so that we can have our absolute value alone. The way we're going to do that is we're going to add 5 on both sides because the opposite of a minus 5 is plus 5. And now we have our absolute value alone and it's like all the other problems we've done. Make sure you always get that alone first. A big misconception is people will start right from the beginning and set everything on the left equal to 19 and negative 19. That's not what you do. You have to move that 5 over first. So now we're going to split this into two problems. x plus 9 equals 24 and x plus 9 equals a negative 24. Okay, so to solve this we're just going to subtract 9 on both sides. And there we go, we get x equals negative 33 and x equals 15. Okay, this one, we have a 2 out front as well as a minus 6 over here. So recall back from concept 4, we always do the adding and subtracting before we did the multiplying or dividing. So the first thing I need to do is add this 6 over. Bring everything down to absolute value x minus 7 equals 10. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a 2. That cancels the 2 out on the left. I'm left with the absolute value of x minus 7 and on the right I have 5. And now it looks like it has looked before and we can split it up into two problems. Make sure before you split it up you've moved over the 2 and the negative 6. So we set it equal to 5 and negative 5 we're going to add 7 over on both sides. And we get x equals 12 and x equals 2. All right, let's try this one. There's a little bit of a trick to this next one, but we're going to find out what it is together. So first of all, just like normal, we need to move the 6 and we're going to need to move the 2. 
We're going to start by subtracting the 6 over. And then we're going to divide by 2, just like before. Okay, right here we have to stop. We haven't had this happen yet, and we need to notice that we have an absolute value equal to a negative number. A negative number. Remember that the definition of an absolute value is the distance from zero. Can you have a distance that is a negative number? Do we ever talk about negative five feet or negative two inches or anything? No, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. We can't have a negative number equal an absolute value. Remember, absolute values always come out positive. So right here, we know that this is no solution. It's no solution if you get the absolute value equal to a negative number. Okay, we didn't know that starting up here. Just because the 20 was negative didn't mean that it would be no solution. It's right down here where you get the absolute value equal to a negative that you can stop and say, okay, that's not, um, that won't have a solution. It must be no solution. All right, and then I think we have one last one. So here, again, we're going to move the 4 and the 2. We always start with adding or subtracting first, and then we'll move to the multiplying or dividing. Some of you are sitting there thinking, oh, I know what's going to happen. Okay, stop right here and look at what we have. We have the absolute value of x plus 2 equals negative 7. Right away, we know that it's no solution. You can't have an absolute value equaling a negative number. I guess I was wrong. We have one more. So this one was the exact same problem, I believe, except it's got a negative right here. Let's see how that changes our answer. So subtract the 4 over. Divide by this negative 2 right here. Now already you should notice a difference. We're going to have this equal to a positive 7 this time. So we can keep going with this one. This one will have a solution. So we're going to subtract 2 on both sides. We get x equals 5 and x equals negative 9.